Denise McCabe and I'm a Stamping Up demonstrator in Australia on the New South Wales Central Coast and this is my Makeup Monday for Monday the 14th of October 2024. So welcome. Today we're going to do a fun fold card. Um, I created this card about five years ago and I've had a couple of emails from some ladies that wanted to know where I'd, if I'd done a video tutorial on it. And I wasn't doing videos five years ago, I only just sort of started at the end of 2019 to do videos. Um, and I made, I'd made this card for my husband for his 60th, but 60th birthday. So I have searched high and low for that card. Um, and I put it in such a safe place I can't find it. So I've recreated a couple for you and we're going to do one again for you. I'll make one now for the video. So let's go down to the craft desk and we can get started. Okay, so I'll move these things out of the way and I'll show you my two samples. So it's called a Star Easel card and you can make them all kinds of sizes. So this one is using a piece of cardstock that's 6 inches by 12 inches scored in half at the six inch mark and that's then you cut diagonally and you get your two triangles here now for this card i've used um, the country lane dsp which i thought was quite neutral and quite nice the nest of uh, spotlight on nature die the nest of win nests of winter designer series paper i've used a sentiment from the saying something ephemera pack the Cherry Cobbler and Gold Ribbon, and these are the Faceted Gems Trio Pack. And that that's our, our card. And if you wanted to, you could put a panel of white cardstock on one of the back pieces um, to write on. So it comes apart like so and folds up. Now you would have to make your own envelope for this card because it's not going to fit into a 6 by 6 because of the points. Um, so yeah, so that's that's the only one thing, and you probably also need instructions for whoever you're giving it to how to put it together. So that's oops, that's out of sight. That's our big one, our six inch one, and this one is um just a standard A5 card, card base, cut and decorated. Um, it still doesn't fit into a standard C6 envelope, so you do, you would have to make your own envelope for this card as well. Um, we used to have an envelope maker punch board thing. I think I've still got mine in a, <laughs> in a drawer somewhere, but I'm not going to show you how to make an envelope today. So this one I've used um, the Reindeer Days Sweet Collection, the paper, the Spotlight on Nature dies, a stylish shape die. I stamped my little reindeers out and coloured them in. And I've used the Peaceful Season stamp set for the sentiment. Um, and once again, it comes apart. Won't fit in the C6 envelope because of the points. So, yeah, you'd have to make your own envelope. So, and it sits back in like so. And you can bring your easel in. You can have your easel out further if you want. Or you can cinch it in, whichever, whatever you like. They stand really nicely on your sideboard or your buffet um, and they look really nice. They're a nice display sort of display card. So that's your standard size. This is the big <laughs> big Bertha, I'm going to call it. <laughs> um, it certainly is a real wow one because it's so big. <laughs> but um, I prefer the slightly smaller one. So we're going to recreate this size today. So I will put this right out of the way because I need to bring in my paper trimmer. Oh, let me walk you through what we're using. We're using the Country Woods Designer Series paper because I think it's quite neutral. And I'm using the Garden Meadow stamp set, the wheelbarrow. We're going to stamp that. 
um, and I'll die cut it out and we'll colour it in so it shouldn't take too long but what you need for your star easel card for this size is a piece of cardstock normal A5 card base 21 centimeters by 14.9 scored at 10 and a half centimeters then we're going to cut from the score line down to the bottom left corner and cut from the score line down to the bottom right corner and that will give us two triangles that makes these these two points of the stars okay for your designer series paper you need two pieces 10 centimeters by 14.4 centimeters they're going to be cut in half diagonally one piece will be cut from the top left corner down to the bottom right the other piece will be top, cut from the top right corner down to the bottom left and then your center piece we've got a spotlight on nature die we've got a solid shape banner and we're going to do our bit of stamping so i'll hold those up that's the measurements for the card it's really easy really easy so i'll just hold that there if you want to get that for a minute Okay, so we'll put our measurements to one side and we'll start. So I've got my A5 card base and it's 14.9 by 21 centimeters and I'm going to put it here at 10 and a half centimeters, get rid of my cutting blade and I'm going to score it really well. Okay. I'll just move my trimmer out of the way because I'm going to fold that over and get my bone folder and give it a really good press down. So we've got that score line really, really good. Okay, so I'll bring this back in and open this back up. Whoops, just about making sure everything's still in view. So we're going to put our card base back in and we're going to put our score line in the track along with the bottom point whoops you can't see that <laughs> in the track so both of them are lining up in the track and we're going to get our cutting blade and put it down and cut that triangle off we're going to shimmy our card base around and put the score line back in the track and this bottom left corner back in the track just lining up in the center of the track there we go, that, that's pretty, pretty good. And I'm just going to cut that off. That looks good. Okay, so basically we've got our base and we've got our two triangles. And that's, that's just using, that's not how you did it Denise. That's just using your standard A5 card base. And that's the way we've cut it. To create our triangles to work with them so that's that now I'm just going to bring in my two pieces of designer series paper so I've used this paper because it's quite neutral and I quite like it now this one you just got to remember maybe I've got to do I'm just thinking if I cut it this way down top left to bottom right I think that's right <laughs> I'm getting myself confused but I'm sure that's right yes that okay let's just do it see how we go if it's wrong we've got more paper so I'm putting the, the corners in the trimmer in the in the track That gives me that side, but it doesn't give me that side. So I do need more paper. I was mistaken. So just bear with me while I find more paper. I I've got more paper, is that one? So I will cut another piece at the 10 centimeter mark. So what you do is you get enough for two of these cards because you need more of the paper. So this one's going to go from the top right to the bottom left. So 
just lining that up. Okay, so you've got those two. And then we've got these two that could go on another card because, you know, we couldn't flip them over. So we could use those on another card. Okay, so you get actually two cards out of your paper. I am going to need more for my other piece as well. Okay, let me... So then we've got our triangles that are going to go like so. Let me try this first. Um, we're going to do... This one I don't think it matters. I could be wrong. <laughs> so top right into the... And bottom left into the track that one once again yes once again you'll get a piece left over for another card so I gave you a bum steer there for a minute and then we'll do top left to bottom right so I'm getting enough pieces to make another card okay so let me move that away and I can show you what I'm talking about so I've got this card base here, okay, I've got my triangles, Don't wanna... so I've got my pieces for my card base and I've got my pieces for my triangles. I now have enough to do a reverse card, see I could do bottom triangles and then these top triangles with another card base, so you get enough to to make two cards when you're cutting your designer series paper and this is for the a5 card size i hope that makes sense i hope i haven't confused you <laughs> confused myself but anyway so let me get my glue and we shall start putting our paper onto our triangle oh see that's not what i wanted it has a bubble in it okay Okay, so I'm just going to line it up. So you should have a little minuscule border around with your 14.4 and by 10 centimeter piece of designer series paper. You can cut it down another half centimeter if you want. You can go smaller if you want a bigger border. I just like the little tiny border. Okay, that's one. Okay, and this is two. And I like the liquid glue because it gives me just that little bit of wiggle room to get it lined up. I can move it around a little. Whoops, too much. <laughs> Okay, so there are two triangles done. Okay, so let's put this on our, to our card base. And just once again, it's a little tiny border. I just realized I'm quite low on my screen. Sorry, I will try and move it up. And glue on the back of this. And I like this paper because it's not directional, so it doesn't cause you grief. It doesn't mess with your head. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to... Because the board is so little, I just want to make sure I get it right. Okay, that's good. So that's our card base and layers done. Okay. Now we're going to get our triangles. And that's, if you get them in this orientation and bring them across like so, that's the best way to create your star. And you can work out where you want, how much of an angle you want. But before we glue those together, we're going to get our ruler and a pencil. 
and we're going to measure up three inches pretty sure it's three inches i'm going to go up let me find my instruction book where did i put it here it is oh, i didn't write that down <laughs> of course i didn't let's just measure it yeah three inches or if you want it in centimeters seven and a half centimeters let's do seven and a half centimeters because the rest of the card i've done in centimeters so let's just do that and i'm going to use my pencil and just put a little mark there and i want to do it on this side as well seven and a half centimeters okay and we're going to cut down one inch or two and a half centimeters so i'm just going to line this up on my glass mat on my grid and put my ruler here make sure i'm lined up and i'm going to just draw a pencil line down to two and a half centimeters because that's where i'm going to snip and here we go down to two and a half centimeters there we go Oop, throwing things around so now i'm going to get my paper snips and now because i've got because i've got that pencil line i can't really see it very well but i can see it my pencil line on my paper i'm just going to put my paper snips in lined it up that's my puppy being naughty <laughs> and just snip down there we go and that creates your little slots you can get an eraser and rub out your pencil marks if that bothers you if they're noticeable okay so then so we've got our card base done now we've just got to get our angle of our star okay because that's going to sit in here but it's best to get our angle first if you've got a sample you can pull your sample out and maybe lay it on top to see how you've got the angle and do it that way but i'm just sort of going to eyeball it and this is the bit that you want to be the same down here you want that to be the same okay so i'm just going to grab some glue and i'm just going to get both pieces it's always good to make a sample card because then you sort of feel like you're on the right track now put too much glue on that in the wrong place let me just fix this up a little bit yeah that looks about right and i'm going to get my tissue and get rid of that there we go leave back on the glue <laughs> okay so that's quite the same angle but it doesn't matter because they all fit into the card and that's not the one I want to fit into the card although it would work okay. oh fumble fingers let's just get there okay so that's how it works but as you as you can see i could put this one in here if i wanted to and that would look really good too with that paper so it's just entirely up to you let's just switch them back around so i guess the trickiest part is getting your triangles joined together and making sure they're right i would suggest get, doing a sample card get some old retired paper out before you start and have a go with that but that's what it's going to look like okay so these are my spare pieces for another card but i'll do reverse i'll do that paper down there and that paper up there i'll put those to one side i've got my spotlight on nature die i've got my banners I've got two in case i stuff up <laughs> and i've got my black memento and i'm just going to stamp my wheelbarrow 
and I'll turn it around this way. There we go. Didn't quite fit on my die. That's why I'm stamping it on another piece of paper. Okay, so I am just going to grab my cut emboss machine. I'm going to grab my die for my wheelbarrow. Oops. And I will bring that over and we will just cut that out. Just going to line up my wheelbarrow, my die on my wheelbarrow. Just make sure I, I like to cut before I colour because if I cut out and I've misaligned my die, I can do it again <laughs> without having coloured everything in and thinking, oh. so I like to cut before I colour. Just the way I like to stamp before I stick. <laughs> so let's have a look, see if I line that up perfectly or near as. Not too bad, not too bad. Okay, so let me get rid of my cut emboss machine. Back over here. Okay. Okay. So let's bring our dies and and do do. I'll put that there with the stamp and then I won't give it lots of time. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of paper underneath it. And I've got my blends here. So I am going to do um, a smoky slate wheelbarrow. Nope, I'm not. Or am I going to do grey granite? I've got a feeling my smoky slate. Oh no, that's fine. Look at that. So this is dark smoky slate. And I'm going to go around the ridge of the wheelbarrow here. Just like so. Okay, and I'm just going to... It is dark, yes. <laughs> I'm just going to go down here and just go around the edge here and I will do a bit of blending with my light smoky slate. Light smoky slate. Okay. Yeah, that's the one that's a little bit sad. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to, so your stamping blends do actually have a life, a life um, span, <laughs> they don't, don't last forever, um, which is a bit sad, but um, I have replaced the nibs on some of my blends, I found something on Amazon and I have replaced them and that has worked for most of the ones I've replaced. But um, stamping up don't sell replacement lib nibs. This one's looking a bit sad. I think I really need to get a whole new set. Because this, this colouring's not looking fantastic. But I'll, I'll make it fantastic. <laughs> now I'm just going to go over in swirls. Just to blend all that together. Ideally, I could should be using the paintbrush end, but my paintbrush end on my light smoky slate is not very good. So we'll just let that dry and see how it looks. I am going to get dark grey granite and do the handle and this bit that's holding that wheel on <laughs> and this bit that goes around here 
remembers riding in the wheelbarrow with your dad pushing it when you were little. I remember that. And we did that with our kids too. <laughs> That's a funny memory, isn't it? Okay. That's that. That was dark grey granite. I am going to get light basic black and I'm going to use the other end because it's a bit gone to God. I'm going to do my little handle and I'm going to color in my my wheel. I'm not going to blend my wheel because I don't think a wheel or a tire needs blending on a wheelbarrow it doesn't need that kind of fanciness going on i'm i'm it's really bugging me as to where i put my husband's star easel card he had a look for it because he keeps a lot of my cards i make for him especially if they're like fun folds and he said i don't have it <laughs> So all I've got is a photo on Instagram, um, not Instagram, on Pinterest, <laughs> which is a bit silly, isn't it? Okay, what's this one? Light smoky slate. This one is dark smoky slate. I am going to do that in here because I'm sure that needs some sort of color on it. I'll find it and then I'll go, why couldn't have I found that on the day I did my video? <laughs> anyway, I'm just going over my wheelbarrow. Okay, so now we've got to do our, our bit of um, our flowers. So let me just see. What's this one? Lemon lime twist. That seems a bit in your face. <laughs> Can you hear the kookaburras? <laughs> They're across the road in the trees. It's a very Australian thing if you're watching from overseas. Kookaburras are one of our, one of our native birds. And um yeah, that that was them just squawking. So we live up opposite a park and a soccer oval. And um, there's a playground over there and lots of trees. So we get lots of wildlife and bird life around our place. Um, that's that. Now, I think I might do... What's this? Pretty flamingo, that's not what I want. I want pretty and pink. I've got my in colours in this because they won't fit into my case. So let me just get junior pop and start in pink. So I'll do some of my little flowers pink and I'll do some of them yellow, I think. do a couple of things here in a lavender colour because I think they're little sprays of lavender. Okay, that's pretty in pink. Um, lemon lolly, dark lemon lolly. Who doesn't love a wheelbarrow full of flowers? I do. I love flowers. that and fresh freesia is the one I want that's Highland Heather what's this one dark fresh freesia okay I just think these are little bits of lavender or something like that so I'm not doing being very fussy with my colouring, I'm just sort of putting a little bit of colour on it.
just adding a spray splash of color there we go um i think that's pretty good so let's put those away and now oops let me get those away too. of course it falls down <laughs> Now, because this background's pool party, I thought I might put a little bit of pool party ink onto my circle, just behind my wheelbarrow. So, let me find my pool party stamp pad. And let me find... This is how I keep my blending brushes. Um, I, this works for me. <laughs> Okay, pool party I feel is like a blue, a blue, oop, a bluey green. Sorry about that noise. And I'm just got a little baby blending brush. I'm just going to load it up, and I'm just going to start in the middle and sort of circle around, just to to give it some shading behind. And if you do blobs in the middle, it doesn't matter because your stamped image is going to cover that up. So I just want a little bit of colour peeking out around. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So, I want a little bit more up here, so I'll get a bit more. Now you're probably thinking, why didn't you just do a pool party circle? I didn't want to. <laughs> but see how nice that is, just with a little bit of shading around behind it. I think it looks nice. So, put that back, put my brush back into my little pen jar, and we get rid of that. Now, I'm going to put my wheelbarrow up on dimensionals. How long are we gone? Oh, just over the half hour. I'm nearly done. Nearly. Now oh, look, let's just put another one down there, just for good measure. <laughs> okay. There we go. Yeah, that's right. And I just noticed some of the little bits didn't come out when I die cut my circle. So let me just poke those bits out. So you can decorate this style of card any way you like. You can just make your centerpiece the focal piece and go for it. Okay. So this is where it sort of gets a little bit tricky trying to put it onto your onto your um onto your star if you want to get it sort of centered i think it's best to do it with it constructed because otherwise you can stick it onto your star piece and then it not be in the right place for this so i am going to put some glue on the back of my circle just here just in the center and Then I can just, whilst I've got my angles right, I can just put it there and then press, hold it and press it down to attach it. I think that's pretty good. So that's what it's looking like. So let me get rid of my glue and I've got two banners in case I stuff up, I don't stamp properly. I'm going to stamp in basic grey because pool party is too pale and I just think basic grey will be a good colour to stamp in. And this is the happy birthday sentiment from the, the Garden Meadow stamp set. So this is still available, it's in the online exclusives green dot normally means it's an online exclusives unless i've my my system doesn't my system fails me let me grab that piece of paper and just 
Yes. My system sometimes does let me down, but hopefully not today. There we go. Got a spare banner now. Yay. Okay, so once again, set a stand out card up. I'm going to probably put my banner across like so. I could do it across the top. I'm just trying to think what I want. Do you want it across the top? I don't know. And I'm not live, so I can't ask you. <laughs> I think I'll do it like I did this big, big Bertha. <laughs> I think I'll do it like that. I think that looks quite good. So I'm just going to get a little bit of snail. Hold the card back together, Denise. And I'm going to just put that across like so, like that. Now it's time for a bit of ling. I wonder what ling we could use. Let's have a look. I'm going to bling just my diamond, my star. Oh look, this has got a Swiss Lagoon. Hmm. Pretty close. We'll keep that out. That's an option. Um, let me look here and look. Well, that's Lost Lagoon as well. I like those better. I think we might go with those. Or oh, let's think about this. We could go with butterflies. Do I have any butterflies? Let's have a look. That's, they're the birds and things from this suite. Have I not got my butterflies? I'll have to get some more brush brass butterflies. Surely I've got, oh, I do. I think I like the butterflies. Let's have a look. We could go with those because they're quite nice. But I think butterflies and dragonflies. And birds. Let's do that. Let's let's be bold. Okay, so brush brass butterflies, they carried over, they're in the annual catalogue. Okay, I'm gonna put a butterfly there. Oop. So the dragonflies and birds are from the, the meandering meadow suite collection. I'm gonna put a birdie up here. And we're going to get this out of here and grab a dragonfly. Actually, I don't need that. And let's see. Let's just put the dragonfly here. Okay, so we'll put those away in due course. And that is a star easel card. So that's the one we've made today using the Garden Meadows bundle. I'm just getting rid of that. <laughs> and we've just stamped and die cut the wheelbarrow. And you can write on the back. So you don't glue the base and the, the star together. It's meant to come apart. You could just write on the back here to the person you're giving it to. So that's the one we've just made. Oops, they're falling apart because <laughs> they're not standing up. That's the other one using the reindeer day bundle. And this is Big Bertha. <laughs> she is 6 by 12 inches of cardstock. So, so 12 inches, 6, six wide. And then we scored it at six inches and I cut from the score line down to the bottom right, score line down to the bottom left. That gave us our two triangles for our star. And that's why it's such a big card. Big Bertha. Let's call her that. Sorry, birds. 
I, don't, I hope that's not offensive. <laughs> so that's our big Bertha card, <laughs> Star Easel card. This is a A5 size card base, and this is today's. It's just because I'm lying them flat, they're not cooperating because they are meant to stand. <laughs> so I really hope you like that card. I will reply to that email those ladies sent me and let them know I've done a video. <laughs> so let's go back to uh, face view. Here we go. Yay! So that's, I'm just trying to, does that help? Not really. Maybe. <laughs> that's a star, I've got to get it right, star easel card. I hope you like it. It's not that hard. It's another one. Let me try and make them sit like as if they will be displayed. I'm not doing a very good job, am I? <laughs> and then here's Big Bertha. That's Big Bertha. <laughs> so I hope you like those cards. They're a bit of fun. So thank you for watching. I have gone over my half hour. So I'll finish up now. I hope everyone has a great week. Um, I will see you on Wednesday afternoon at 3 p.m. I promise I won't be late this week for Card and the Cuppa and another one of our 12 weeks of Christmas cards. So thank you for watching and give me a thumbs up, like and share my channel as I try to grow it and I'll see you on Wednesday for Card and the Cuppa. Bye for now.